Hello everybody, I am first and foremost in my robe. I love robes. I just didn't feel like getting dressed yet, so don't mind me and my stylish outfit. So today's video is about why I quit drinking. First I have to say that yes, I mostly quit drinking, uh, but I do have an ounce or two here or there, meaning like I'm not a social drinker, but every once in a blue moon, I will have a drink or two. So I have been on this I quit drinking kind of lifestyle for, I don't know, like five years or so, six years. I honestly have lost count, it's so long. Every year I usually don't consume any more than like 10 to 12 ounces of alcohol in the entire year. So pretty much I quit drinking. I was seeing a guy and I kind of caught him cheating on me. A few days later was my birthday. So I went out for my birthday and I got annihilated, wasted, so drunk. And I met this guy and Honestly, I barely really remember meeting him and in the morning I was getting text messages from this guy in my phone <laughs> and I was like, who is this? And he was like, seriously? <laughs> you don't remember? I'm like, no. He's like, wow. And he's like, we like made out last night. And then he told me his name and then all of a sudden like a little bit of a memory came back and I was like, oh yeah. I remember this guy and it was funny because I was working at the gym at this time and I remember seeing him at the gym and thinking like wow he's hot and then I ended up bumping into him at the strippers on my birthday wasted and I went up to him and I think I said you're gonna be my boyfriend for the night <laughs> and so we hung out and we made out and I was really about it I guess I was so drunk that uh, he was like okay, I mean, I'll just like leave her here now, like with her friends, she's too drunk. But then we continued to text. He was, he had actually just like left uh, town. He was doing like a week on, a week off. And so he would drive to the nearest city on his days off where his home was. And so we just continued to text and there was just like a spark click. But like that week, like we were texting and everything and obviously added him to Facebook and I was like this guy is so cute and he's so funny and we were just vibing and then I went out with my girlfriend and got annihilated, wasted, blackout drunk again, super drunk and again didn't really recall much of the night but I can remember this little sliver of the night and I was like I asked my girlfriend, did I hook up with that guy? And she's like, yeah, you did. And I remember thinking, I didn't want to do that. Like, I don't know what overcame me. Like, what was I thinking? And I'm really attracted to this guy. So like, I have no interest in this other guy when this new guy that I had met on my birthday, who I would later end up dating, I was like so drawn to. So. I felt like I couldn't really be my true self or trust myself in that moment because sober destiny would be like, no. But drunk destiny was like, whatever. So that was kind of like a quick moment of like, I'm gonna just chill on the drinking. So then during the time that I was dating this guy, we'll just call him Chad. So Chad and I, um, because he had this shift on, shift off, he was only in town for a week and then he'd be gone for a week kind of thing. When he was gone for a week, because he was like in the city in like days off, he was drinking a lot. And so he would get really drunk and he would call me and he'd say a bunch of weird shit. Some of it cute, some of it not so cute, some of it embarrassing, some of it rude. Um, and he would never remember it. Like I'd have to say, do you remember calling me? He's like, what? What did I say? It was, and it was over and over and over. It was just like a repetitive ritual. He would get drunk. He would sometimes get high and drunk. And he wouldn't recall what he was saying to me. And that if he's not recalling what he's saying to me, he's not recalling really what he's doing. Obviously, I empathize with him. I understood like that that was me. But I had kind of chose to like not do that because I was like, coming to the realization like I didn't have complete and total control over myself when I was drinking and I wasn't really at my best when I was drinking. I wasn't making the best choices. So through that, 
me being able to study him sober, witness him over and over just doing stupid things and then and, and then doing things that were hurting me. For example, one time he called me and he was walking drunk down like the street after the bar and he just called out to a girl and was like, Hey, like you're hot, like what are you doing? And he's on the phone with me. Like that's just to, goes to show like how oddly out of it he would be. And then she'd be like talking to him and then I was like yelling him like Chad, like what are you doing? It's like like, who's on your phone? It's my girlfriend, he says. And she's like, well, why are you talking to me then? Like, so disoriented and, like, just not really with it. So it really kind of turned me off from alcohol. And I really slowed down drinking when I was dating him. It was finally an experience that I had that really broke the camel's back. And I was like, this is it. So one time we went on a trip together and we were driving through and through the mountains to go houseboating and we just had a really good time but obviously we weren't really getting drunk um and then we got to the houseboat and I remember thinking okay so we're gonna be on this houseboat on the water out in the middle of nowhere with a whole bunch of strangers to me I didn't know any of these people they were all his friends and I was thinking this is not a kind of place where I want to black out so I'm just gonna just be really relaxed have a couple drinks really like just try to stay just slightly buzzed and all I really remember having was maybe two drinks and then all of a sudden I woke up in bed on this houseboat it was dark and my head was pounding like it was like throbbing and I just felt like a fucking train hit me and I was thinking what the hell happened to me like what like and they come out and i and i'm so disoriented and i'm it's just pitch black the last thing i remember it was light out and i'm like i don't know what happened i i, I didn't know these people so i go to someone and i'm like i don't know what happened but like i just woke up in my bed like and they're like oh you know yeah you like disappeared we couldn't find you and i'm like what what do you mean like we were looking for you for like an hour or two or something like calling out your name i was like Oh my goodness, like, was I just sleeping in the bed then? They're like, someone finally found you. Um, you were on top of the boat. This is like a four-tier boat or something, like, super high, like, super large, like, the biggest houseboat you can get. They found you sleeping on top of the counter on the very top tier. <laughs> so, I mean, who knows? I could have just been sleeping. I had, I was actually getting to that point, too, sometimes that I would, oddly enough, like, find a weird place and just go to bed so I had I know I had been known to do that like I remember I went to a party one time and they couldn't find me and they found me in the laundry room like curled up <laughs> sleeping um I remember one time I got underneath a, someone's Christmas tree and like curled up and went to sleep like just the kind of odd thing that I would do sometimes and I'm like okay well I mean it's not that bad you know I mean it sucks that you guys lost me in the sense that I wasn't answering you because I was sleeping on the counter but they were all like well we don't know if you were sleeping there the whole time that's just where we found you and this is the kind of the story I kept going around to different people this is all that they they would say is that okay we found you there but who knows where you were for the rest of the time that we were looking for you and I was like okay whatever I mean I don't know I don't know and you don't know so why are we assuming that I was off doing whatever else and um but I mean somehow I got to this point where I couldn't recall anything and I literally couldn't no matter what they were saying even the fact that they found me on the top of the boat and had to like walk me down I just don't even remember that so I don't know if I got drugged or if I just <laughs> totally blacked out like um I can't say but when I did find my boyfriend he was extremely high uh really drunk I don't know if you've ever seen something like this but when they're extremely extremely drunk and really really high on cocaine they kind of almost in a sense become a different person and they're very sketchy like very twitchy very you know almost like sweaty and their teeth are grinding and click glitching or clicking and their eyes are googly and weird and they're just like they look sick <laughs> so I'm sure I didn't look that great either since I just woke up from some like blackout sleep but this is what I found him doing blow with this girl and um he was extremely angry with me and he was accusing me of being off who knows fucking some guy he kept saying like 
you were probably off, but some fucking guy, da 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 you, we couldn't find you, and he was extremely angry, like, extremely angry, I had never seen him so angry in my life, in his defense, he wasn't even himself, he was, he was beyond, he was gone, he was, something else was inhabiting his body, he was way too out of it, I remember being in the room alone with him, and he was just yelling at me, calling me names, filthy names, accusing me of doing who knows what with who knows who and um, scaring the shit out of everybody, ruining everybody's night and um, he was like really in my face and he was really really scaring me and I, can you please stop like yelling at me like I just want to make peace but like I can't do anything, I can't change what happened, I'm sorry. <sighs> I couldn't really put up with his shit anymore and I decided to leave the boat so as I was walking off that someone walked by, it's, my memory kind of recalled his face but not clearly he was super friendly with me he's like hey like and he knew my name he was like destiny like what you doing you want to come party with us and i'm assuming like i must have been partying with them they already kind of like met me they were the boat beside us like we had docked on this land somewhere and and i said yeah sure why not like this whole boat hates me they think i ruined the night and they're accusing me of being some like whore and i'm not having any fun here my my boyfriend is fucking evil and possessed and beyond angry with me so i'm like i might as well just go with this guy he's super friendly and you know and then my ex came off well ex now yeah at the time my uh boyfriend came off the boat and he's like wow you're like you fucking slut you're going to fucking fuck this guy or something just fucking absurd and i was like are you fucking kidding me like i'm just going to like I'm at this point I'm so dead sober it's not even funny I must have been sleeping for at least an hour or two I guess a few because I'd been sleeping on the top of the boat as well as in the bed so I snapped and uh, I was like I, I can't be here I need to leave like I need to leave now and I I stayed there for like a couple more hours and a few more hours until the light came up and then someone got me out of this I had to uh get in a boat it was either a boat or a sea dew I wish I could recall and go across the lake with my stuff and then find the greyhound and get a greyhound back. It would have been 18 hours back home. And uh, I was like, okay, hey, I'm done drinking. And I really pretty much quit drinking at that point for like at least close to a year. And uh, I was like, you know what? I can't be a good girlfriend if I'm drinking. I can't trust myself. I can't verify where I've been, whether I've been sleeping or whether I've been off with someone random and I have no clue, you know, what's going on in, in that situation. Like, I really loved him and really wanted it to work and I didn't want to s sacrifice it for the f just the need to drink. I really didn't need to drink. I, in my eyes, I was like, I'd rather be with him sober than lose him because I'm drinking. But the unfortunate thing was that he didn't feel the same and he had the same issue kind of that I had. And um, so we ended up uh, breaking up. I don't need alcohol to really be who I am. So I really feel like alcohol is so popular because a lot of people do need it to kind of express themselves more honestly and clearly or just feel more comfortable in their space and care less. Like they have this I don't give a fuck kind of attitude, which in reality we all kind of want to have. And obviously if you struggle with being able to be comfortable with yourself, and you need alcohol for it, I understand why you drink. That was me at some point. But if you can get around that and figure out in your head that it's just in your fucking head that you can dance and you can talk and you can be open and you can connect with people with alcohol, then it's much better <laughs> to go out and just not fucking drink. There's just so many reasons that drinking just <laughs> sucks. <laughs> people use it to bond with each other, to use as an excuse to hang out with each other. And I mean, that's 
why birds of a feather flock together, right? That's why the meth heads hang out with each other, potheads hang out with each other, the alcoholics or the partiers hang out with each other, the ones who pop ecstasy hang out with each other. There's like these little groups. It's all about like being social, being connected, being accepted, and maybe even just having a secret together. And that's a lot of the reason why people drink. But if you see around that and you see that's why people are drinking, you don't need to drink. You're just like, whatever. Everybody just wants to like connect and be friends and whatnot. You just have to find another reason to hang out because you will find if you quit drinking, all of a sudden you don't have anyone to hang out with because everybody else just wants to call you up to do drugs or drink with you. I quit drinking because of a number of things. One of them being that I would black out. <laughs> so when I say black out, I would literally forget or not recall whatsoever what I did for hours at a time. It could be an hour that I, I seem to have forgotten. It could be up to like four hours that I seem to have forgotten. The worst that I ever experienced it was one time when I went to a all-inclusive resort in Mexico. It was my first time at an all-inclusive and I just couldn't handle <laughs> the whole fact that everything was free and you could just drink as much as you wanted and everybody wanted to drink. So really, honestly, I remember like a couple hours of each day. And right now, I recall like barely anything. And a lot of the things I recall are because of the fact that people told me about what I did later when I was sober. So, you know, a lot of people would say, yeah, I don't really remember stuff. But then when someone would say, you did this, do you remember? It would come back to them. It was not like that for me. It would not come back to me. It would not come back. Like as hard as I'd like to try. I could not remember. If I blacked out, it was gone. Gone from the memory bank. It was like it never ever happened. The things that I would do when I was blacked out, I was... I can't even begin to explain the stupid shit that I would do. But if you want to hear about the stupid shit that I would do, then comment down below and I'll make a video separately on all the stupid shit I used to do and why in detail I quit drinking. But blacking out was a huge thing for me. I said, you know, what is the point of me drinking if I am not going to remember anything that I did that night? It's like going to bed. I might as well just go to sleep. So yeah, it was maybe amusing and entertaining for other people, but for myself, it was just a waste of time. So that was a huge part of why I quit drinking. Another part was that I had my own company so I've had my own company for many years now and I felt like I needed to be more responsible like I couldn't have my job or even reputation jeopardized by the destiny that came out when she was drinking <laughs> I really truly felt possessed like in the sense that like who was doing those things who was saying those things who was acting that way I don't know because I don't even recall doing it and the only reason I really even knew anything crazy had happened is because my friends would tell me oh my god destiny <laughs> like do you remember doing this like so when I was drinking it seemed like almost half of my life was only ever just narrated to me I wouldn't even know that I blacked out I would think oh I remember the night but no I didn't so because of my business and because I you know just became more responsible and I thought no the things that I did when I was drinking I did not approve of I did not agree with I didn't think that that was me making those trades like I was like I would not do that sober I <laughs> Like, why did I do that? So I was like, I don't want to drink anymore because I'm making stupid choices. I'm doing stupid shit and embarrassing stuff and it's just not rational. I really thought that it was time to grow up. So I was, I guess, kind of heavily affected by alcohol more so than some people. I, don't, I know a lot of people, it doesn't affect them this bad, but um, it's funny because since I became sober, I go out so many times with people who are drinking and they think they recall the night. When I go out with people who are drinking, when they are telling stories about the next day, they're not recalling it properly. Like nobody recalling the night before as clearly and as in detail and as honest as the person who's sober. The people who are drunk, it's all like, I don't know what's going on there, but it's not <laughs> loading in properly in the brain. And it's not being stored like everyone thinks it is for the next day for you to remember. So <laughs> there's a lot of shit that's going on that you may not even know really happened because you think you know, but you don't know. And I, I noticed that a lot as I started to like not drink. I was like, wow, like everyone thinks they know what's going on when they're drinking and they don't. Like they do not recall it as clearly as I do because I was the only sober one there. So the more that I hung out with drinking people, sober, the more I wanted to not drink anymore because <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool when I was drinking and when I hung out with people who were drinking I was like, okay maybe I'm not so cool. Like these people are just sloppy <laughs> and they're kind of like repeating themselves over and over. Uh, they're like yelling and talking at absurd like levels. They're saying shit they shouldn't be saying in the sense like maybe they might tell someone a secret. 
I cannot count how many reasons there are as to why I quit drinking. It's like, let's just kind of start rambling them off. Yeah, people think that they're super cool when they're drinking. They're not. They think they're super funny and they're super witty. They're not. Um, <laughs> they look sh like shit. <laughs> they start to like just, I mean, I'm sure you've taken a selfie when you're drinking like shit. Why do I look like shit? I don't like, yeah, you, you just start to look like, I mean, you're poisoning your body really. So your body's just like, uh, their eyes go a little funny, you know, like their words maybe slur, they're stumbling, they're these are things that I do too. So let's say like you as a drinker may experience memory loss, saying shit that you regret, saying other people's secrets. Let's see, doing shit with people you shouldn't be doing. Like, you know, whatever, if that's like sexual things or maybe drugs, like drinking is the gateway to drugs. I can't count how many people it's like they're drinking all of a sudden they're like, you know, they're skiing, they're like, they're drinking and if they have an addiction, like if they're fighting smoking or even they don't smoke, all of a sudden they're smoking. They're smoking and they're snorting or whatever. It's like da 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 Drinking kind of leads into this and this and this. More reasons that I don't drink is because I like being able to drive myself home. I like being able to move from location A to B if I want to in the middle of the night, like leave whenever I want, not having to get my car in the morning. I hate the hangover. Oh my God, the hangover is horrible. And as you get older, it just gets so much worse. But Literally, like, the peace that I experience every Saturday and Sunday morning is just, oh my god, it's just amazing. It's just way better than hating your life. I mean, everybody says the stupid shit. I'm never drinking again. I'm never drinking again. Okay, yeah, bullshit. You're fucking drinking again, but whatever. I love the fact that, like, I never have a hangover anymore. <laughs> hangover is a true sign of what you're really doing to your body. You know, like, what is it that you're putting in yourself? But it's just shit. It's obviously killing you. <laughs> yeah, like, you never lose your cell phone. <laughs> I can't count how many times I lost my cell phone drinking. You never lose your bank cards or your credit cards, your wallet, your purse, your life. You always have that. You know where all your shit is. You know where your body's been. Sometimes you end up hooking up with people that you didn't want to hook up with and you shouldn't be hooking up with. So you never have that regret. Yeah, why else do I not drink? Oh my God, I saved so much money. <laughs> It is expensive to drink, especially out when you're out and about at the bar and whatnot. So I don't spend absurd amounts of money on drinking. Another reason why I don't drink anymore is because I don't like wasting the next day away. Because in reality, I can't count how many times because of a hangover, I was like, okay, the next day is a write off. And sometimes it would go into two or three days, depending on how bad it was. But the next day I am, you know, maybe in bed all day or just hating life. Like the whole alcohol is depressant. You definitely feel it the next day, especially when you don't drink for some time and then you do suddenly drink. You're like, wow, like I hate the world. I hate life. I hate people. Like you're just cranky. It's not like you drink and the next day you're like, the fucking rainbows are out and the flowers are out and I just love life and just people are so great. And no, that's not what happens. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, I'm never fucking drinking again. You know what I mean? Like, oh my god, I'm never drinking again. Like, fucking hate my life. Like, that's the kind of whole energy when you drink the next day. So the next day, you feel like shit, you're bitchy, you're negative, and you also most likely are going to eat some horrible food <laughs> to make yourself feel better. So, you know, the McDonald's is usually what I consume when I'm drinking the night of when I'm drinking and then possibly the day after or whatever, but I'm definitely uh, eating more fast food the more I drink. So that's another reason why I quit drinking. I didn't find that I would be as productive. So I wasn't going to the gym and going to yoga. I was like, fuck it, you know? So yeah, these are why I don't drink. And honestly, life is so much better. It's hard because obviously it's an addiction and everyone's fucking doing it and everyone's trying to make you think that you need to do it to have fun, but I don't think so. I don't think you need alcohol to have fun. So that's kind of why I quit drinking and hopefully it inspires you if you're thinking about quitting drinking to stick with it because it really is worth it. Your body will thank you. Your mind will thank you. Your memory will thank you. Your past will thank you. And your future self will thank you. Thank you so much for listening to my video. And if you want to know about the crazy shit that I used to do when I was drinking, just post something down below. Like and subscribe because this is the only motivation I have to make more videos. Otherwise, have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye. I'm
remember going to a bar with him and I was sober and he was drinking and I look over and he's picking some girl up and putting her on the bar and doing a body shot off her. And <laughs> I came over and I was like, I was like, Chad, like, what, what are you doing? Like, seriously? Like, and the girls were like, wow, like, who is this? I was like, this is his girlfriend. And they're like, what an asshole. Like, they were all like really appalled because he was acting totally single. And then later on that night, I couldn't find him again. And I found him at a table full of girls. And I came up to him and I was like, again, like, Chad, like, what are you doing? Like, I couldn't find you for like ever. And they're like, looking at me. I'm like, they're like, who are you? And I'm like, I'm his girlfriend. And they're like, they're all just again, disgusted. Like, what? Like, you have a girlfriend? Are you kidding me? Like, and so this is me with him at the bar. So, you know, shows whatever, how silly he was when he was drinking. And, you know, so observing him, watching him really put like a distaste for drinking in my mouth and then having my experiences where I blacked out and I didn't know what I was doing. Just making poor choices, uh, drinking was enough for me to be like, mm, that's, that's enough. And that's really what happened to put me on this path of not drinking.